while we run our team, turn out. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sitting here and uh, waiting patiently for me. I think there's a little bit of uh, plus minus in this thing. I was due at the end. It was just like a push <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my name is Max Fernandez, and I am an actor. When I'm not dishing out uh, ridiculous uh, dialogues like. Uh, Maybe we'll get the Or the other dialogues such as Gurudal. So when I'm not uh, when I'm not dishing out uh, ridiculous dialogues like that, I work as an improvisational theatre instructor. What does that mean? I teach improv, basic improv. You see who's writing it anyway? Right. So I teach basic improvisational skills to anybody and everybody who's interested and willing to learn. You know, it's children of all ages, you just have to have interest. So I teach improvisation theatre to a lot of students. Now, uh, I have my workshop and a lot of sessions that happen. And during the sessions, I spend a little time after every session to, you know, kind of interact with my students and find out what kind of uh, uh, fun did they have, was, was my workshop, was my session interesting, uh, do they have any questions? And one of the most frequent questions I get asked uh, is, Sir, since when have you been do doing theatre? What the fuck? Theatre or acting comes in there. How do you get into it? When it? For some reason, people think you know, that if you're 44, you must have been doing theatre since you were born. Like, he took his first steps on stage, something like that. People always have that the oldest boy was doing theatre for a long time. So I'm going to show you a story that I share with all of my participating students who ask me this question. And I share it with them like I'm sharing it with you in the hope that if at the end of this story it inspires even one of you to step out of your comfort zone and take up a passion, a hobby or any art form or a creative activity that you enjoy and you truly love, I would think that the time I spent in coming here writing this speech, what I'm going to say, all of it will be time well spent and worth it. Right? So here's a story. So I was a normal, a little crazy kid when, uh, when I was small. When I say crazy, I say we have this wild imagination as, child, as a child, right? So we're constantly, uh, stories are going on in our head. So as a child, I was really inspired by Bollywood. Uh, we used to have one Sunday movie. Uh, during the week, there were no movies like what, or television channels or digital media. So I would watch movies and I would come back home, eight years old, and put pencils in my mouth like this and pretend to be a hero. Uh, I look into the mirror and yeah, I yeah, out of that. I would sometimes pick up my guns and fire and imagine people in the room. Yeah! And sometimes I would, it, it would depend, you know, I would want to play the hero sometimes. Uh, you need the girlfriend and play from the movie, right? So, so sometimes I would play the hero, sometimes I would play the villain, sometimes I would even play the cop. Good guy, bad guy, cop. There was once I even experimented with. I would die so that my friend would get a girl at the end. This was my story when I was eight years old. Yeah? Wild imagination. Uh, there was a movie constantly running in my head. I think even now that this movie where she is visual, everything running in my head 24-7. But asking me to go on stage and perform or be a part of theatre drama evolution, not happening was I was to use the word shit scared. I was completely petrified of going up on stage. I have what we all now call and know as stage fright. I had, I had stage fright. So there was this one time I remember my 7th or 8th son teacher, she said, Max, come here. She gave me one. This one poem? Copy. I said, okay, I'm right. Copy dear poem. Miss, copy dear. Do I have to share it with the rest of the class? Uh, no, no, show me the poem. I want to see what you do. Looks at it. My handwriting and teachers, uh, English teachers have this thing about handwriting. What you always read about it? Come and talk. So I was like, no, I'm copying, I'm just on my color. But why do I need, I'll share it, no, I will just show it to people and talk to them and ask them to copy. So I said, no, 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 you are going to buy hard this, and next month you're going to participate in an elocution competition. I have selected you, and you are going to go up on stage. And I was like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Basic. No, no, you're going to do and fix this key of body handwriting, okay? Go. So there was one month, Rattu file, Rattu file, mugged, 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 without understanding a word of what I was saying, and one month down the line, there I was the elocution competition. I don't remember the poem, and 
I just went on. All the Rato file comes out to doing exams. Oh, sir, how many Rato files are there? Sir, how many Rato files are there? So there I was, you know. Oh, 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 So I was like, okay, good, that was fun. Cut to college. So college, I spent five years in the college canteen, on the steps, on the bikes outside, everywhere. In, and I knew all the nooks and crannies of my college. And I was a fun guy. I used to crack jokes. I used to have funny experiences and, and incidents that I would share with a lot of people, get the guitar, write smooth songs. And a lot of my friends at that point told me, you are both creative, yeah. you got full creative energies. You have to do something in the creative field. It's, it's all too creative. You want uh, So back in the day, MTV was like a mecca for anybody who was creative. Everybody, it's like, jo bhi creative tha na, everybody goes out into MTV. But I was like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm creative. It's one thing to write spoofs and funny songs and crack jokes that you picked up from various books. But what do I do with this creative energy that I have? Right? But what do I do? What do I do with it? Like if I want to apply for a job at the end of the day, do I go to a bank and say, oh, I'm looking out for a job? Yeah. What post do you want to apply for? Oh, funny man. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to work. That won't get me employment. Push it aside. College got over, full time job came on board. I started working. And this whole creative thing went into the background. So I worked with a placement company, I worked with an event management, two event management companies. I set up my own software form where we used to design and develop. Um, bespoke applications, customized applications, as well as websites, e-commerce, portals. So, I was a sales guy, right? I'm a great bullshitter. So I could just step in and open the door and get business for the organization. Time went by, I was 35, and I was like, you know what, a burnout sensation, a burnout feeling is happening. I'm just getting powered with work. I'm not the boy, 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 I'm not the boy. And invariably the client who's sitting right on the top is the guy who knows the least, right, most of the time. So you're constantly trying to explain and get him to sign a code and this burnout feeling came and I was like, I'm fed up. Work is not fun anymore for me. What do I do? So my brother said, Do you have creative bakar? Do something creative, like step into that. What would you want to do? I want to do theatre, bro. Theatre karun ka. I'm passionate about theatre. I want to do theatre. And just like everyone. I'm sure you've heard, you've had these conversations in your head or you've had friends who've spoken to you. I don't know theatre, but I don't know theatre, but the, how to do it. It's not a menu, it's not like a recipe where you can just cook and, right? So I don't know theatre. Everyone wants to do Sir, you have to explain, so can you explain? Average students would ask me, can you explain to me how to get into theatre? How do I do theatre? Sir, Prithvi, no? Prithvi, the Prithvi. Ha, meri maa, sab dhati bhi ho rai. Prithvi ke nahi ho rai, dhati bhi ho rai. All the drama is happening here. So my brother said, why don't you just go and join a workshop? If you don't like it, come back the next day. But if you like it, you might have discovered something that you never had before in your life. So I'm like, ha ha, karunga, my theater karunga. Three weeks, four weeks down the line, theater goes. Priorities, bills. Mobile phones, clients, went into the back seat and fear came out. That fear as a child, that came out and larger. Sale, Tapli, Pandi Salika, Kwabi Theater Kalega. All of these conversations are going on in my mind. What are you thinking? Why don't you just take a job in Manny? Settle down, behave like a normal human being. What is the theater ka boom? And I was like, ah, dude, I'm going to be a good theater company. My brother said, just go do the workshop. So there I went one day, registered. One of the itna, not karma nahi, but I went registered. I was very nervous. Like, what what will it be like? Will they think I'm funny? Will they like me? Will I be the odd man out? Well, I was the odd man out. I was 35, while the rest of them were not teenagers. They were going to college, FY, JC, and oh, uncle, hello, uncle. <laughs> so went on. I did this workshop, audition, got a couple of shows. Felt really good. People recognize me when I walk down South Bombay now. Oh, he's the guy, funny guy. He's, he's the one who's doing theatre, he's the one who's doing play. Felt good, work was fun again. I enjoyed work. Life was good. There was a spring in my step when I went to work. Super, right? 
few years down the line, my software company shut down. What do I do? I don't know what to do. This whole now vertical job, should I pursue theatre? Should I follow this passion that I have? And at that point of time, I used to travel by train from Kalaba, from BT to Thana, every day. And you know how it is? You've traveled by train, you people travel by train regularly, right? So if you're catching a fast train or even a slow train, but generally fast train, 8.45 it will reach the other station, usual Janta will get in, it will reach Bandra, and a bunch of people will get in, or if you're on the central line or in the harbor line, people will just come on board, and this is what they are doing every day of their life. Every day. Hey, uh, 748, na? Uh, 748. Uh, the platform, uh, platform chat uh, the So this is what people are doing constantly. Constantly hoping to make it for that train on time. And for the first time after this company shutting down, fiasco happened, I noticed this one man used to board the train in Dadar 8.45 every day. Thai, he must be in his late 60s, mid 60s. And I looked at him and this question popped up in my mind. Is this what I'm going to be doing when I'm 60? Jumping into an 8.45 local and getting to work every day of my life. But don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong in, you know, it's perfectly fine if you're 60 and you're active. You realize that as you grow older, you need to have activities that will keep you busy. That is going to be one of your struggles to find activities and keep yourself busy as you grow older. So there's nothing wrong with being busy at 60 and taking up a job. But my question to me was, is this what I am going to be doing when I am 60? Went back. They always say the universe conspires and works for you if you decide you want something, right? Two days later, a friend of mine calls up, Boss, my plane is written and a path is only for you. You come from the audition. It was like, okay, you know what, maybe I should give this a shot. I went, did the audition, got the roles, we did shows, somebody saw that, cast me in another play, I wanted to do production, I wanted to understand what the backstage is all about, I went in backstage, I did it all at 35. Okay, it is painful, your ego gets crushed. When you're 35, right? So you're sweeping there, I'm sweeping the stage, sweeping the rehearsal room, getting chai, feeding chai, getting snacks, feeding people, going for costume searches, prop search, doing everything that you guys might be doing when you're doing theatre right now at this age. Got TV series, got my digital sketches, and there was no stopping me after that, and here I am today, giving this speech. From that frightened little kid who had stage fright and calm for us. This is where I am today. Right? Yeah. So, how did I achieve all of this? Comfort zone. Do we know what a comfort zone is? What is a comfort zone? Anybody? Correct answer. Huh. Yeah, sorry. A place where you feel secure. A place where you feel secure. Good answer. Full marks. Alright. Anyone else? Uh, a comfort zone is generally this, I call it a comfort zone because it is this imaginary space around that we create around us that we are safe and secure. We don't want to step out of it. What is there outside of it? There is fear. There are questions. What will people say? What will they think? What will society say? Will they find me funny? Will I be good? So this comfort zone. I had my comfort zone too. And I did not step out of that comfort zone for the longest time in my life. Then I was doing a 9 to 5 desk job, right? I stepped out of that comfort zone. And the funny thing about comfort zones is that, so this is my comfort zone. I want to push the limit and step out of it. And after some time, this unknown also becomes a part of my comfort zone. So you have to constantly push and push and push and extend that comfort zone that you have created around you. That is the only way that creative spark that I had then and that each one of you in the room have right now. That creative spark will develop and flower only if you step out of that comfort zone. You need to push yourself. There are people who don't want to step up. There are people who try and step up. Fear overpowers you. You jump back in again. Nee, nee, I'm safe here. Nee, nee, it's okay. So many theatre workshops I've seen. No, no, sir, it's okay, sir. Sir, I don't want to do. Sir, you do, sir. 
सर सुपो सर जून जो सो वेरी गुड सर नहीं नहीं आई एम ओके मेरे को नहीं करने का है नहीं मेरे को नहीं खाने का वी आर जस्ट अफ्रेड कॉन्स्टेंटली 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 अफ्रेड सॉरी हाँ सो कम कमिंग बैक टू कंफर्ट जो वन ऑफ वन ऑफ माय फियर्स कमिंग हियर टुडे वाज विल आई बी फाइन विल पीपल लाइक मी व्हाट आई एम सेइंग विल इट मेक सेंस लाइक दिस इज अ टेक्निक यू नो लॉट ऑफ टेक्निकल पीपल प्रोबेबली विल बी सिटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ आर वी इंजीनियर्स हियर और इट्स लाइक वन मॉडर्न राइजिंग लाइक सो आई हैव दैट फियर टू Coming here today, will I be funny? Will people appreciate what I'm going to say? Will it make sense? Will I get a thunderous applause at the end of my talk? So I don't think. I don't know. Fear, fear is there today. And trust me, every, every, every performer, artist, actor, dancer, musician, singer, whatever, painter, whatever, have you, on the day of the performance, you will have butterflies in your stomach. And you will be nervous, and you will be tense, but you have to step out of that comfort zone. I step out of the comfort zone. This is where I am today. This is where my stepping out of that comfort zone back in the day has got me. Good, bad, where will it go? I don't know. Am I worried? Not yet. But I'm happy. It's giving me a better life. I've met a whole bunch of new people, interesting people, creative, creative people. All throughout this journey until the time I've landed up here. One of my sincere requests in my mind, and I hope that it will uh, it will happen over a period of time, is that if this opportunity to explore the arts and craft or a passion was provided to children or students of all ages from the time they were very small and throughout their career path and their educational path and where they want to be i'm sure this world would be a much 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 better place and we would be better as a human race but this is my belief this is what i believe we would be much better as a human race if we had these opportunities provided to everybody you see a lot of old people under the arms right and parents and relatives who are old they don't want to step up they don't want to take that risk and as you grow older mai karu kya you grow in older and older you step out of your comfort zone you miss out a whole new world and probably a world you never imagine i never imagined that i'm standing here and doing a tedx talk right so this is my story and like i said i hope if it inspires even one of you to take up a creative hat a hobby or a passion and you make it a part of your life that you will enjoy and be happy with i think that this trip that i made here standing on this stage and sharing this story with you will be time well spent <laughs>